Shalom, shalom, shalom. This is your brother Yael Ezra Ben Levy coming at you again with another quick video. The video I am going to make today, I have made previous videos on them, but I feel I need to do an update because there, there are more and more people on social media, most of all um, TikTok, that love to promote the concept of the dual prophecy or partially fulfilled prophecies. And, it, and what is amazing to me, they only seem to exist when it involves the one that they believe to be the Christ or the Mashiach. If it is referring to um, Jesus, I, I'd rather refer to him as Yeshua. If it, if it is concerning him, they to me, they will bend over backwards. They will twist the scriptures, take the scriptures out of take the scriptures out of context to promote a dual prophecy. When you can see, when you honestly look back at the source text they give. And when you look look at it back in context from the Old Testament, you can see just by plain, simple reading and looking at the context and what is being said, the um, the things that's going on in the story, you can plainly see that it's not talking about him. So they conveniently come up with, oh, well, it's a dual prophecy. Oh, it's a partially fulfilled prophecy. Well, if it's partially fulfilled, that could be easily debunked. Because for it to be partially fulfilled, the first part of the fulfillment in context also has to be involving the same players in the second half when the rest of it's going to be fulfilled. So that don't work when you change the characters and make it Yeshua. And then the concept of the dual prophecy, you say, OK, it is what it says in the Old Testament. It's that. But we also believe. It's talking about Yeshua over here. Let me show you in the book of Matthew where you will see all these dual prophecies. Because they will have to call them dual prophecies. Because once you, like I said, when you go back in context to look at the source passage they are saying is a prophecy about him, you can plainly see that it's not. So let's go to Matthew chapter 1. I'll be doing all readings from out of the King James Version of the Bible. St. Matthew chapter 1, just look at verse 20. This is St. Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord, by the prophets, by the prophets saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel which is being interpreted, is God with us. Now, I want to start right there. Now, let me just keep reading. 24. Then Joseph, being um, um, raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bid him, and he took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Now, one thing we can understand, when we go to... Isaiah Isaiah chapter 7 and when you look into the context of Isaiah chapter 7 it's talking about the two kings that is coming against the people um, King Ahaz and his people that's what it's talking about that's the context of that chapter and the summary of it is um, King Ahaz and the people was worried. Jehovah sent the prophet 
the King Ahaz to let him know, don't worry about these two kings. Ask for a sign so you will know you have nothing to worry about. Now, I'm not going to read all of this, but I want to go to the verse that they love to say is about Yeshua, Jesus. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, first thing you, you must understand in the original Hebrew, virgin does not show up. In the Hebrew, it says Alma, which means the young lady or young woman. But Tula means virgin. So virgin is not even in the verse. First things first. And also, this is not talking about Yeshua because this is a sign for King Ahaz to see. Ahaz wasn't around to see Mary or Jesus. Think people, context. Context makes a world of difference. And nowhere in this passage do we see anything about um, calling his name a certain name because he will save his people from their sin. Where is that at? In Isaiah chapter 7. So once again, that is a so-called dual prophecy that fails miserably. I mean, all you have to do is go back and look into the actual source where it's coming from. There's, there's many in Matthew, but let's go to another one in Matthew. Let's go to Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, and let's take a look at, um, starting at verse 14. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. And was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, out of Egypt, I have called my son. Now, if you have a reference Bible, it's t it will tell you where it's coming from. And this reference is coming from Hosea chapter 11. So you see in proper context, is this? Referring to that event that happened in Matthew. And most of all, you see, is it even a prophecy? Here it is. The prophet um, Hosea, chapter 11, verse 1. When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. Verse 2. And as they called them, so they went from them. They sacrificed unto Baalim and burnt incense to graven images. First things first. This is, not, this is not even a prophecy. It's not speaking of future events. The prophet is summarizing the events that already happened in Israel's life. He was not prophesying of a future event. He was summarizing what has already happened. So once again, it is a fail. But I love how Matthew takes half of this verse and does it quote it, quote it fully because when you look at the source text, you can see he is plainly talking about Israel, not talking about Jesus. So once again, another miserable fail and attempt to say this is a prophecy referring to someone that it is plainly not. Okay, let's look at one more because I'm not I don't want to be before you long. The video actually went went longer than what I thought. Let's deal with the um two more that shows up in chapter two. Now let's go to let's go to verse 16 of chapter 2. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and all and in all the coast thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. 
then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Rama um, was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted because they are not. Now, like I say again, if you have a um a Bible where you can look at um, references that point you to the passage that is coming from. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah 31 verse 15. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 15. Thus saith Yehoah, a voice was heard in Ramah. Lamentation and bitter weeping. Raquel, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. Thus saith Jehovah, refrain thy voice from weeping and thy eyes from tears, for thy work shall be rewarded, saith Jehovah. They shall come again from the land of thy enemy, and there is hope in thy end, saith Jehovah, that thy children shall come again to their own borders. So we can see that this is not a prophecy talking about Herod slaughtering the children of Israel. This was simply a prophecy that was referring to the exile children returning back home. So it wasn't talking about a slaughter. And also, furthermore, none of the historians during that time talks about this great slaughter. No historian. There is no record of this story except in the gospel. Think about that. So once again, that's another attempt and a miserable fail at a prophecy that was talking about during the events of Yeshua that are not talking about that. Now, let's take a look at the last one. And this one is the, my, one of my favorite ones. This is the last verse of um, St. Matthew chapter 2. Yes, look at verse 23, the last verse. And he came and dwelled in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. Now, the prophets, many prophets spoke of this. Many. Not a prophet, but by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. And when you look for that one, and when you look for the reference for that one, the two passages they give is sad. They give Judges, and they, they give Judges 13, 15, and they give 1 Samuel 1 and 11, talking about um, the Nazarite vow. This is not talking about him taking a vow. The people that take a Nazarite vow are not called, called Nazarene. So once again, there is no such um, prophecy of this. And if it is, it's definitely not found in the Tanakh. So once again, if anybody have any insight on where this prophecy come from, I would love to hear it because in my whole year, Decades of being in this. Nobody have never gave this prophecy from any book. Or any other book to matter. So if you know where that prophecy is, I, I would love to hear it. And I'm pretty sure there's others that will love to hear it. But I just wanted to point these things out to you. Do a quick update. A prophecy is a prophecy is a prophecy. If Jehovah said the prophecy is about Egypt, guess what? It's about Egypt. If he say the prophecy is about Israel, it's about Israel. You cannot remove things out of the prophecy and insert what you want in it to fortify your belief. It either says it or it doesn't. So remember that. If the word of God is your um, final authority, you need to stand on that. Do not take the um, scriptures out of context. Do not manipulate them. Do not twist them. Do not redefine words to fit your belief. 
Let the word of God be true and every man a liar. Because if you are not echoing what Jehovah said, you have made up something. And that's the bottom line. Shalom.